All right, what is Gucci, everybody? Welcome back. It has been a few months since I made a video. Sorry, I've been having a few computer problems lately. But in this video, I want to get back to Swift and more importantly, some helpful utility functions to help you guys out. This video will focus on a function that's used in almost all of my apps, and that is a delay function. That means after a certain amount of time, execute this code. It could be after one second, after five seconds, or after, you know, a certain amount of time for the view to settle down or for the user to kind of get their grip of the surroundings of the screen. Okay? So without further ado, let's get started. Also, I want to note that I have a askme.me, an account. It basically allows you to ask me any questions and I can interact with you. And I'll post that in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start by creating a function called delay. And this function is going to take a time, which we're going to call, which is going to be of type double. And then it's going to take a closure that a closure is kind of like an anonymous function. So it has parameters, except our closure is going to have no parameters and it's going to return nothing as well. And that's why we have I have no parameters or closed brackets and then an arrow for returns and then another closed bracket so it returns nothing. Now we're going to return we're going to use that time to calculate how much how much time we have to wait before we initiate our closure or we start running all the code in the closure. And we do this simply by calling dispatch after, which is a function from UIKit and you want to call dispatch after not dispatch dispatch after f okay and so when you call dispatch after you have three parameters you have the dispatch time which is the time you want to the t at what time you want the code to run which we have to calculate it the queue so which queue you want it to run on so what's that saying is which thread do you want all your code to run in? And we want this code to run on the main thread because you can only update the view or UI or the graphic elements of your screen on the main thread, on one thread. You can't multi-thread it. You can multi-thread like internet connections, like I'm getting information from the web, but not actually updates to what you see, the views. And so because of that, we're just, we're going to call dispatch get main queue. So we're gonna get the main queue what's used to update the view. And then we're going to pass it the block, which is what code is going to execute after a certain amount of time. Those are our first two parameters and are pretty easy. And I'm going to put that on a second line. And now we're going to go work on our dispatch time. And I'm going to make a new line for that. And simply we're going to call dispatch time. And this is another, this is going to be a function called dispatch time. And it's going to create it's going to create another time relative to the default clock so we're going to now have our we're going to basically get our current time and then add on whatever time is passed on to us so we're going to get dispatch it's another constant dispatch time now which is the whatever nanosecond to the nanosecond time this function was called is what dispatch time now is going to be and the delta is what the change is going to be so if it's negative that means in the past and if it's positive that means in the future delta usually is, means change and note it's an int 64 so whatever we do we're going to have to cast it to an int 64 i know it gets complicated and we're going to have to do delay and so we're going to we're going to have our delay and our delay is going to be our number of seconds we could make a number of minutes by timesing it by 60 again, but we won't do that. We're going to take our delay, and then now we need to take that number of seconds and times it by the number of nanoseconds. And the way we do that here is, sorry, let me get that all right. Found my error, guys. This is not delay. This is obviously time, which is the double we pass in to our function. Okay, so now we have a few complicated things going on here. So in our dispatch after, the first parameter is the time to initiate the closure, which is the third parameter highlighted right there. To figure, calculate the time we want to initiate this closure or call it on the main thread, 
We then call dispatch time, which is a helper function to figure out what time we want to initialize the closure. We then say we're going to start at the current time, which is a standard for dispatch time now. And we're going to add on time times n seconds per second, so nanoseconds per second. So how many nanoseconds are in a second? So that's what dis dispatch time is going to take all those nanoseconds, and then we're going to times it by five. So even though a nanosecond may be um, a million, this dispatch time works in nanoseconds. So this is all fair game. So simply all we're going to do is we're going to times it. We're going to times five times the number of nanoseconds per second, and it's going to init it's going to call itself five seconds later. And that is simply it. And then all we have to do to call the function is call delay t t five times five double. And then we can use our closure syntax to do whatever we want. We can print hello. And simply by doing this, I can't run the program because it's in a playground though. It will work. It will do whatever you want to do. It will run when it needs to run. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and ask any questions. I'll have this code posted below if you just want to copy it because I know it gets a little hairy, but subscribe if you like it and have a great day. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe below and ask me any question by clicking here or following me on Twitter right below it. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Do the cha-cha slide.